All right, um, I did not expect to make a third update for the indoor football world. I did not expect this today. I did not expect this at all. But here we are, you know, just a couple days after the last one that I did, you know, maybe, maybe I should have saved it all for this update here. Um, this is another mid-January update as you know there's some there's some things here we need to go over um, there, there is some things that are you know they're, they're having you know that, that there's some things involving the big boys there's also some things involving the little boys as well you know you know boys amongst men type situations in the indoor arena world and the first thing is that the Indianapolis enforces they are dead and they 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 said the Facebook post they've suspended operations forever. That, that kind of sucks, but I mean, whatever, man. You know, they were a part of the MIF. I believe I went over the MIF, you know, not too long ago. In fact, that was the first update of this month. Um, so, you know, that that's something interesting, you know. I don't, again, I don't really talk too much about, you know, leaks that are pretty low on the totem pole, but, you know, Indianapolis and Forces were a part of the AAL, and they eventually moved on from that, and we'll talk a little bit more here about some, you know, some other teams that were in the AAL in a minute here, but, you know, um, so the FCF, they're continuing to add, you know, owners, and, and, and you know, teams and stuff like that involving NFTs or non-fungible tokens. Now you got one of the owners is an ambassador, I believe now. So that's that's something, you know. Uh, but the big one, the big. The, well, actually, we'll go to this first. Um, you know, West Virginia. Their their situation is basically still the same. You know, they haven't seemed to find any you know investors just yet. That's getting stalled. Um, you know the Rough Riders. You know West Banco Arena. It's it, it's closed from like June to September. You know you know remember the NAL was going to try and fit them in early before you know before everything went bad, but that obviously was not the case. So you know that's why West Virginia still you know isn't going to play uh, next year. And speaking of arenas, obviously, you know, if you know already about the schedules and everything like that, you know, Jacksonville has to have seven home games. Carolina has to have seven home games, you know, season tickets, I believe. That was actually the reason it was season tickets, you know, but whatever, you know, still try it. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to dwell too much on that because we already touched on the NAL schedule. The NAL has a new game ball. It's all right. You know, if you looked at it, you know, somewhere, uh, I believe, I believe they put it out on Facebook or whatever. The NAL's gay ball, it's all right. It's a little white ball with some other stuff on it, and I just, nah, I was just like, okay, whatever. Um, but the real big stuff here is from the CIF, the Champions Indoor Football League. You know, for it. Well, I, I had the league part, but. You know the situation with the Wichita Forest, how we've extensively covered, you know, some of the stuff that's happened to them, you know, with the whole playing in a casino, with inflatable walls, not giving money to high schoolers, yeah, they're gone. They have been removed from the CIF, so Wichita is done. Um, you know, whatever they do... You know, if they're still around, you know, if they're going to be still around after all this, they're going to have to find something, but it's not going to be in the CIF, you know. So the CIF is rolling along with eight teams. They're rolling along, and they just announced their new schedule today. And their new schedule now outlines as follows. Top six teams will be qualifying for the playoffs, so that means two will get a bye. And all eight teams have a non-league home game season will now start instead of February the 18th I believe it will start February 27th with the non-league games then the actual regular season gets out of the way March the 12th all the teams will still play 10 regular season games so CIF got it together they they saw the problem they they, they, they took care of the problem easy peasy 
Lemon Squeezy, eight team CIF for 2022. Um, again, not my projections at all, like I said, but I mean, the way they've handled some of the stuff, you know, with the whole, you know, with the AFA, you know, like I said last week with the AFA and what they're trying to do, which is a complete mess. Um, yeah, they've handled things much better than what I expected. So kudos to them. Um, in elite indoor football, I don't, like, once again, you know, elite indoor football is a league that I just genuinely have complete, I, I have generally, you know, no thoughts on this league as usual. Um, but other people do. And then, you know, I take, though, I take what, you know, some of the stuff is, you know, from the IAF and, you know, bring it together. So basically what I got from, you know, um, um, you know, from some people that, you know, follow the EIF. Their schedule has come out. Southern Steam, Peach State Cats, Bay Area Generals, and I believe the Alabama Empire are rebranded from the Birmingham Ravens. If not, then the Empire are an entirely new team. These are these teams will be the ones playing home games in the EIF. They'll be playing home games. The other two teams, the Atlanta Furious and Southern Renegades, the road teams, travel teams, um, the Rochester Kings, you know, they rumored to be on the EIF schedule for years and they never seem to show up. Uh, the EIF updated the website as well. Most teams will play up to eight games. Some teams play eight, some play three. It's kind of wishy washy. Uh, Peach State and the Southern Steam also have announced their arenas as well. So, you know. One is um, in the uh, Jacksonville Ice and Sportsplex. That's, I believe that's where the Southern Steam will play. And the other is in Swanee. I believe, I believe that's a city in Georgia. If not, you know, I'm, I'm not going to... Let me let me actually look it up and see if, you know, see if that's actually a real city, you know. Uh, it is a city in Georgia, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, so... That's where these two teams will play. Um, I don't know, you know, about the Bay Area or, you know, uh, the Alabama Empire or whatever. I don't know where those two teams will play, you know, at this time. You know, that, that's all we got at this time, you know, for that. Um, if there is a February update, you know, we're getting a little bit closer now to the season starting. So that means, again, you know, a little bit more confirmation that we'll be coming back with this week in indoor football, you know, around March 12th, you know, with the CIF schedule, you know, now being officially revealed, you know, start at the same time at the IFL. So, you know, everything's everything's going to be interesting. Everything's going to be interesting next, you know, next month or, month or so, you know. Well, actually, next two months. we still got two months to the season starts. But, you know, Whatever happens in between then and now, I I, I, I just uh, I, I'm gonna be crazy. I, I, I'm gonna go crazy with this stuff, man. So with all that being said, I'm gonna get on up out of here. We're gonna you know wrap this on up, and I'll, I'll see you all soon with um, the wild card. So, Got to talk about the wild card, yeah. So see you then, everybody. Take care. See you in like four or five hours or so.